it is important to understand that there will be a lot of people who will not comply who have no idea about the policy. They're oblivious to it. So we don't want to make the assumption that everyone who is not complying, and that would be true even a year from now, let alone now where it's just freshly been implemented. We don't want to make the assumption that people who are not complying are doing so intent intentionally to violate institutional policy. What we do want to do is ask ourselves this question. What do we want to accomplish when we engage with someone who is not complying with a policy? What is the objective of an interaction? And I think hopefully you would all agree that at least the objective that I've found that makes the most sense is you want to be able to engage with the person in such a way that they will choose to be compliant in the future. You're not wanting to engage with them in such a way as to cause them to be more apt to be non-compliant. And that, that says an awful lot about how you approach the individual. Because if I approach a person, if I approach you in such a way that I'm authoritarian or that I'm in some way presumptive about your use of tobacco, or I'm in any way disrespectful of you, or you can perceive me as being disrespectful of you, then you would most likely, I certainly would be likely under those circumstances, were I the person approached, to see that approach as another reason for me to be opposed to the policy. So the most important people on the campus to deal with over the period of time that we move forward with this policy are the people who use tobacco. And to deal with them in a way that is based upon respect and consideration and a way that gives them the benefit of the doubt that once they've understood why the policy exists, once they've come to find a way to see the rationale for the policy that they can sort of identify with when that happens, they're much more apt, and we know this from experience, to be compliant with the policy. And that's what we're after. So what do I do? I, I know right away when I walk up, the first reaction I get, and I've done this literally hundreds of times, most of the time the person or persons will start to put the cigarette out. Why? They don't want to be slammed. Huh? They don't want somebody up in there, some old guy in their grill over a, this tobacco thing. And then I say to them, no, 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 don't put the cigarette out. I'm sure you didn't know that we were a tobacco-free campus. Do you mind if I chat with you a minute while you finish your cigarette? They're not expecting that. See how non-authoritarian that is. I'm, con I'm allowing them, giving them permission to continue to violate an institutional policy. And my rationale for doing that is, what did I say the objective of the interaction is? Educate. educate, but try to get them through that education and how I treat them to comply with the policy in the future, right? So by saying to them, no, no, don't put the cigarette out, I'm, you should see a lot of times their shoulders literally relax. And now it's a little different. And then I say, do you mind if I chat with you just a minute while you finish your cigarette? Powerful. I don't wait for them to say, oh, that would be just a wonderful idea. I say to them, I move in. I don't allow anywhere more than a nanosecond. And I say, at that point, do you know why we have the policy? Now again, these are things I've learned how to say based on my frame of reference and my background. It would be a mistake for anyone else to take my background, my frame of reference, my experience with this subject, my years of working with students, and feel like you could just do that comfortably. That's, a, that's a, everyone who sees this, who is participating today, needs to understand. This is not about getting other people to approach things the way I've talked about approaching them, except to think conceptually about the approach. 
It needs to be you, how you would approach someone. It needs to be respectful. It needs to be based on your having given a lot of thought to what is going to produce the best outcome in terms of their being compliant in the future. And when you've done those things and couch that in terms of who you are using your vocabulary, your, your interpersonal skills, you will approach people and be very successful. No doubt about it. But always remember that be yourself, be comfortable. This idea that you need to say a certain thing and it needs to be sort of written down and scripted, no. Just be who you are and share your feelings in a respectful way and try to be visual, visually aware and in tune to how this is being received. And the minute you feel that there's any tension, then just back off and say thank you. I appreciate you giving me a chance to tell you we're a tobacco-free campus. And it means a lot to our campus to, if you'd cooperate with that. Look upon these opportunities to interact as that, as opportunities. Don't look on, on it as an onerous situation that might produce reaction formation and negativity. Look upon it as, a, a, I call them, ac opportunities to greet people. I want to greet people. Hello, welcome to our campus, if it's the beginning of the campus. I don't recognize you. Are you a student here? You might start that way whatever you're comfortable with. And then say, by the way, I, I, I'm sure you don't know, but we're tobacco-free campus. So that, that's a greeting approach. I'm not trying to get anybody, you know, to, I'm not wanting to get into some long involved process of trying to change them from a tobacco user to a non-tobacco user. I'm more interested in greeting them in an upbeat way and trying to get them to understand that in the long term, it's really in everyone's best interest if the campus is tobacco free. Even the tobacco user can learn. I learned how to be aware of the impact of my tobacco use on other people. I mean, I didn't smoke around my children and my wife. I didn't smoke in my home. Uh, I didn't smoke in my car. I did sometimes get in the car and have a few and then flip it out a window. I'd mentioned that. But I was not one to do that on a regular basis, but a lot of tobacco users do. There are a lot of students that, that don't even think about the impact of their tobacco use on their pets. And a lot of students are very close to their pets. So, and there's a lot of other things you can do when you have these ongoing discussions with people about tobacco policy. Um, and I can, I've done many of those kinds of discussions. You look for opportunities to engage with people. If you see someone several weeks later and feel like the interaction went bad, you can walk up and say, you know, I talked to you the other day about tobacco, and I know you got offended. Did I approach you in a, in a bad way? You can even approach it that way. Or I felt like I, I didn't communicate well with you, and I just want you to know I didn't mean to offend. I just wanted to share about our policy. Most of the people who use tobacco on this campus, in whatever form they use it, are not in any way intentionally trying to be offensive to other people. They're not intentionally trying to uh, denigrate the campus environment. They're not mean-spirited people. They just happen to use tobacco. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, or you may disagree with this, but making a campus tobacco-free is not, in its ideal form, in my mind, an attempt to get people who are eligible to use tobacco to not do so. It is not an attempt to try to get everybody who smokes or chews or vapes to stop doing that. It is an attempt to create a campus environment of free of all tobacco use, out of respect for others and that very campus environment. So the rationale that works the best for me when I talk to people about why it is they should comply with the policy 
is to express the policy in terms of it being a matter of respecting the campus environment. Now think about what that means. The campus environment is a lot of work is put into, a lot of money is spent, a lot of effort is, is made to build beautiful campuses. The UAA has a beautiful campus. Its other campuses are beautiful and efforts are made to keep them clean, keep them attractive, very much a part of what a higher education institution is, is the environment of the campus itself. And historically, people have used tobacco, and a lot of those people have been very disregarding of the environment. They've discarded cigarettes all over the place. Um, I know when I smoked, and I smoked for 30-some years, uh, I would flip cigarettes out of the car window driving down the road. I don't think I'm a, a dis an irresponsible soul, but I was being very irresponsible in my use of tobacco. I wasn't even thinking about it. And that's what, what happens with a lot of tobacco users. They don't think about how their use impacts the environment or people around them. So if we can talk to people about the tobacco use or think about it ourselves first and then talk with people about it in terms of this idea of respect, it really helps a lot. teaching all of our staff that it's important to teach our students and one another. And staff teach by how they conduct themselves. So acting as though it's appropriate to be non-compliant with a policy that we think is a dumb policy is not teaching the students how they should be with regard to policy. Rules. You have to see this as a process, and I tell every t everywhere I go, this is a process. It's not where UAA is, was on November the 19th when the policy was officially went into effect. It's not where it will be next November 19th. It's where is it going to be in two or three years? Are we going to be at a point where we've continued to educate? We've continued to deal with the people who have uh, have resistance to the to the policy and don't agree with it are we going to try to continue to work with them in a respectful way to get them to understand you know maybe this isn't as bad as you thought it really isn't about telling you you can't use tobacco if you're of age but you got to be 18 to use tobacco in Alaska and a lot of people come on this campus every day who are under the age of 18 previous policies have given a nod to them to use their tobacco if they're underage we haven't been concerned about that. So there are ways of thinking about this policy that get way beyond just you're, you're robbing me of my rights, that perception. But we don't do ourselves any good if we try to argue about these things with people who have opinions that are different on this. Rather we say, we should say, I, I, what I choose to say to people is look, you may, you have you may have a totally different point of view about this or ways of looking on it, and that's, and that's okay. The question is, as a part of this university environment, as an employee, and then as a student, you, you have to go along with the policies of the organization. That's part of the deal.